Hello and welcome to Share Spotlight. Today's guest is Dave Wall. He's the CEO of 88 Energy. Welcome to Shares. Thanks for having me. Um, I'd just like to sort of start off really with a brief outline. Perhaps you give us a brief outline of 88 Energy, um, what you're doing, and um, your current prospects in Alaska. Okay, so we're an oil and gas exploration company focused on the central north slope of Alaska. We have a very large acreage position, uh, up to 690,000 acres with our joint venture partner, Burgundy Exploration, which is a private company. We're chasing two main plays, both chasing liquid hydrocarbons, oil and condensate. The, the major play is an unconventional play, which is targeting a formation called the HRZ, mm -hmm. which we're just about to flow test imminently. And the other play is a conventional play, but also targeting oil. And that's something that uh, is, you know, the, the second string to the bow, so to speak. So today's RNS um, came out and said you've done the, the lower part of the HRZ stimulation and then you're moving to the upper part, is that correct? That's right, so we drilled a vertical well called Icewine 2 uh, to test the, the HRZ formation uh, with a fracture stimulation operation, which is executed in two stages. The first stage is in the lower part of the HRZ and that has been successfully executed uh, over the weekend. So that's something that we're, we're very happy with. Um, that was all done to plan and now we're in the process of stimulating the upper zone, which is the stage two. Uh, and timeline wise, you know, when do you expect to have the, f the initial flow test results coming so what, out? Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll flow back the upper zone and really what we're trying to do there is get some of the stimulation fluid that we've used to open up the cracks in the rock off the formation and start to see some hydrocarbons flow to surface. And once that happens, we will take a sample of those, which gives us uh, some good information about the characterization of the hydrocarbons in the reservoir. And then we'll drill out a plug in between the upper and lower zones and flow them both together. Take another sample, and that will take um, several days to clean up as well. And then we gradually open up the choke because we don't want to pull on the reservoir too hard because the sand can come out of the fractures that we've yeah. created. And we want those obviously to stay in there so that the oil can flow to the surface. And gradually open up that choke and then after several weeks we will get um, a representative maximum potential flow rate from from this formation. And will Icewine 2 go to production? Is it, it, it plans a production well do you think for the future or is it literally just a test at this stage? It's a, it's a test well um, contingent upon the results it can go on a, a longer term test up to six months and that'll give us some useful information about how the pressure drops in the reservoir and then the performance once, once that happens in terms of decline rates and so forth. And then, you know, the follow-up plans will be a horizontal well initially with a multi-stage stimulation um, and that will give us an idea of the relationship between the rate that we get in the vertical well, which we think if we get something in the order of 100 barrels a day is a good look through to a potentially commercial rate from one of those horizontal follow-up wells. And that'll be off, off the same pad, you're not moving to a new location, it's off the same that's, pad? That's correct, so the, the first follow-up well will be off the same pad um, and then subsequent uh, wells will have to be off uh, a new pad that we were, we're in the process of permitting. And that's in the locality of ice, current ice wine permits? That's correct. So. One of the key advantages of this project is that it is bisected by an all year round operational access yeah. road. And so all of our initial operations we have uh, executed from that road. So the, the new pad would also be off the road as well. And you acquired yeah, quite a lot more acres recently with Burgundy. Um, obviously there's plans to, to go further out I presume on your exploration, you know, both seismic and, and will you drill further out as well in the next 12 months? or? Yeah, that's right. So the, so the plan would be, if we have success in this well, we need to then delineate the potential of the HRZ across the wider acreage position that you pointed out. And ideally what we would do is we would drill a dual purpose well, one that could test one of our conventional prospects, which is the second play that we're chasing on the acreage, but also test the HRZ as, as well, which, is, which sits beneath these conventional prospects. Um, the main conventional potential that we see is out to the west, so that would be the likely location of one of those delineation wells. And at the same time, obviously, we'd be drilling the, the follow-up horizontal well that we mentioned before. And you raised additional funds in March. I think you then quoted a, sort of a total of um, 39 million Australian dollars at that point. Clearly, you're spending some cash now on the existing project. Do you think you need to raise funds in the next so sort of six months, 12 months, do you think you've got sufficient capital base now? On, on the back of success, we will, we will need additional funding. So. Um, just to break it down, 
30 million US dollars, we tend to think in US dollars, our share of the cost of the well, 14 million US mm. dollars, and then you know overheads and everything like that. So we will have 12 or 13 million US dollars left after the, the finalization of this program and things are on budget, yeah. um, which is probably something that people will want to understand. It's not over at the moment and doesn't look like it will go over. And then obviously any follow-up um, wells that we drill, we would, we would need additional funding. So the horizontal follow-up well would cost in the order of 25 million US, of which our share would be around 20 and Burgundy would fund the mm -hmm. remainder. And then the conventional test well out to the west also would cost in the order of 17 or 18 million US dollars. So the, the 10 or 12 or 13 million dollars we have in the bank post the drilling of this well won't cover that either mm. in the success or the failure case. So we would need to get additional funding from somewhere. So obviously in a success case, if the market cap goes up and it's less diluted for us to raise money and investors want us to raise mm. money rather than you know sell part of the acreage or farm it out, uh, we would do that. Um, and then in the failure case, I think that um, you know funding that conventional test well is something that we would look to farm out that okay. well rather than raise money because the share price in the failure case would be lower. Yeah. And so the dilution associated that with that would be harder to swallow. Whereas I think in the success case, you know, a higher share price obviously affords a, a much less dilutive path. Of course, it's been climbing the last few weeks, you know, hopefully on the success of ice wine too. Um, looking two or three years out, you know, do you think you'll be producing or do you think you'll have probably sold the asset or farmed out the assets? There will be some production, so, um, but however, you know, our goal is to create as much value as we can over that two to three year period that you refer to. And then at that point in time, it's probably more appropriate for a larger company to come in to do a full field development of this asset because there are you know, literally over a thousand wells that could be mm. drilled into the HRZ on the unconventional side. And we're not the company that would be doing that unless we you know, transform significantly over that period. Are you to, yeah, probably you can't answer this, but I'm going to ask the question anyway, and we can always strike it off the video. Um, have you had approaches to, to get involved or partner in with you at this stage, or have you been out looking? We, we haven't really actively tried to farm out because, the, you know, fortunately, the access to capital that we've had from the market has been you know, very strong. And we've always felt that retaining as much of the working interest as possible until we've actually created that definitive value point is something that, in the medium and longer term, would far outstrip um, you know, in terms of value for our shareholders giving away a significant chunk yeah. at the front end. So we have talked to several companies. There is interest. Um, we haven't really tried to sell it, but we do know that you know, there, there is a lot of interest in this well and this is something that a lot of companies are watching. That's good. There's a lot of big players, not only on the North Slope, but other parts of Alaska as well, you know, picking up things at the moment, aren't they? So could be interesting times. Uh, and just final question is, you know, for a potential investor, somebody who hasn't really come across 88 Energy before, can you give some, um, an idea of why people should consider 88 Energy as part of their investment portfolio? Yeah, so I think there's, there's a couple of things. One, obviously the asset itself. Um, you know, we have a very large acreage position. There's a very large resource potential in the HRZ, several billion barrels of, of liquids potential. The conventional play, which is a, a backup ostensibly, also have, has, uh, by our estimation, one and a half billion barrels of potential, which on its own is significant. And then, you know, in Alaska, we've enjoyed um, the benefit of substantial credits from the state, which has helped us execute a program in a relatively lower dilution given the fairly challenging oil price environment we found ourselves in and we've been able to create value for shareholders yeah. you know and there's a good above ground story there we are located on an infrastructure there's a pipeline that runs through the acreage as well which uh, needs more oil in it and then i guess the second part is that um, we have managed to, to deliver on what we said we would do uh, operationally we've been able to execute very efficiently in a safe manner and also in the time frame that we've indicated to investors. Great. Dave, thank you very much for coming in and talking to Shares Magazine today. Thanks for having me. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's uh, Share Spotlight. If you want to find out more information about 88 Energy, go to the Shares Magazine website and type in 88E, which is the epic code for the stock.